Omaha. We're going to do it this time. I promise you. Last time we got our flights canceled. This time we're taking a straight shot. I'll be there Friday, March 29th and Saturday, March 30th. Columbus, Ohio. I'm fired up to head your way. Never been there. My first time coming to your beautiful city. I'll be there Friday, April 12th and Saturday, April 13th. Los Angeles. I'm excited to announce that I'm part of the Netflix is a joke festival. I have my own show Sunday, May 12th at the Bourbon Room. You guys ask me, how come you're not on Netflix? Well, here's a chance to sell this thing out and show them why I should be. Get your tickets now. Don't wait. All tickets available at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I'm going to start this episode like I start them all by saying thank you. Thank you for supporting this show. Thank you for supporting anything I do. It's genuinely appreciated. You guys, I love my job. All right. And if you got to have more of this show, then you got to check out the Patreon. It's called the Honeydew with y'all. And it's this show with y'all. And I keep telling you, Y'all have the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. And if you just want to check out a sample, go listen to the episodes I do right here on The Honeydew with Josh Wolf, where we highlight uh, like 10 of our favorite episodes. We've done two or three of those now. Check those out. I promise you it'll blow your mind. All right. And thank you for supporting The Way Back. I genuinely appreciate it. It's going great. I love this show. Um, All the guests you're seeing here, we're trying to get on there as well. Have fun with them. Uh, So go subscribe to that. You know what to do to help it out. Rate it, review it. Um, Check out the audio feed as well. It does exist. All right. And uh, come see me on tour. If I'm in your town when you're around, tickets are available at ryansickler.com. All right. That's it. You guys know what we do here. We highlight the lowlights. And I always say these are the, the stories behind the storytellers. And I am very excited to have this guest on today. First time here on The Honeydew. Please welcome Carrot Top. Uh, hey, welcome to the up, Honeydew. Buddy? What's up? But thanks for having me on. Dude, this is thank great. you for thank you. I for have doing a lot of low lights, by the way. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm good. Serious, yeah, because all right. Before we get into it, please. <laughs> I'm Carrot Top. I'm full of low lights. Yeah, you can't be full of highlights, bro. Even that hat's yeah. even the hat's got a little the rainbow's falling off. Oh on yeah, the low. <laughs> I know. It's like it's typical. I made it. It's falling apart. That's all you can tell if I made it. It's falling apart. Um, promote everything you'd like, please. Well, you know, we I'm lucky it. to have the show in Las Vegas at the Luxor. I've had uh, is there eight year we'll be there that's another, crazy uh, i know it's can unreal you, we'll be there there another six it years at now. the luxor so i'll be i'll be dead by the time i'm done at the luxor but 18, uh, 18 years yeah and uh and then and we have uh some road shows coming up i believe in some rock like uh, indio palm springs something like that coming up in march i can look it up on my website caretop.com all right yeah other than that working 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 yeah dude well i'm so stoked to have you here thank you um we'll get into a few things i was talking to you before uh we started but your real name is scott thompson for those people who don't know that um and i said to you you know who came first and would you you would have had to change your name because of scott thompson and kids in the hall anyway but right you became and then i told you you know i researched my guests enough but i also know from the shit i see about myself online like look i'm not tall but I'm not five six, right, okay. Right, right. I'm not motherfucking five right, six. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I know you know yeah. take shit for what it's worth. But I said I saw that a coach. Yeah, gave I don't you know where nickname. that came from. Yeah. My, that my swimming coach named me that because that's definitely not what happened. I was uh, I was always ha- had been called other things worse than that. And I was in uh, I was in my dorm room. And I just started to. I wasn't even a comedian. I said I wanted to be a comedian, so I thought I got I got to draw a logo, right. So I had this, I drew a logo and my friend says, what's that? I said, it's a logo for what? And I said, like for one of my classes. And I said, no, it's for my, my act. You know, my, my, when I become a comedian, that's my logo. And he's like, you don't have any, you don't have a joke. So I said, I know, but I have a logo. That's more importantly. So I, I got that out of the way. That's, and, I'm thinking the same and thing. I, that's I thought of it was a brand. I, I was a marketing major. So I kept saying, it's gotta be a brand. It can't be Scott Thompson because there's already Scott Thompson kids in the hall. Plus, that's not a show busy name to me. So I thought, <clears throat> I want to be a name like when you're walking down, you know, like Vegas, you just see it and it stands out. And I said, oh, Carrot Top. I don't know how it just hit me, Carrot Top. So I drew this logo with a carrot and a thing holding a microphone and there, Carrot Top. 
It was a blessing and a curse, by the way, Ryan. You know? I hear you on that. I mean, you know, but first it's I did it, and then sometimes carrot top. I'm like, what have I done? You know, you know, I might have called myself carrot top. I should have gone. Mindset, I should have gone with Queen Latifah. It was still available. <laughs> It was still available. You, it, was it was still was available. Still available. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I, you know, it. I. This is a, a wild parallel, but Deion Sanders did the same thing with prime time. He right, was prime in his time, college right. dorm. Was like, okay, I'm not a player. I'm a brand. Right. And went that direction first. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's true. great. That's yeah. great, yeah. And then, well, it was kind of really honestly how it started with me with the with the with the when the name came out too first. When you start doing clubs as you did, you'd get to the club and there'd be 25, 30 comics a night. So when I went up there with my trunk, at first I didn't think of this. I had my little prop trunk. It was just a trunk with like a rainbow on it or something. And I was pulling all my props out and I went down. Then one night I'm back there watching after I was done, I my prop trunk was left open. And I said to myself, why do I not put Carrot Top in the lid of that? So the whole time they're watching me, it's a it's an ad. So I put Carrot Top in the lid of the trunk. And then it was like, you know, the brand started and people would come up after the show and say, Carrot Top. Oh, or who did you see? This Carrot Top guy was because they they saw it. It was marketing. It was in their head. So I did, in a sense, get to use some of my marketing uh, skills with the with that because people make funny marketing and then you're a comedy. I said I still to this day use marketing and even like with the trunk lid that's in the name, the brand, the whole thing. It's right? smart. It's so smart. Yeah. You should be putting yeah. it up yeah. on yeah, right behind you. Yeah. So again, I, I researched you, and the only thing I really sort of found about your upbringing was your dad worked for NASA, yes. your brother's Air Force F-16 yeah. pilot, it yeah. said. Yeah. All right. But I, I saw nothing about your mom or anything. So can we talk about, like, let's, mom, where are you from my originally? Mom's in, Tell my me mom's about. in prison. We don't talk about my mom much. Are you, no. are you, all right. <laughs> My Listen, mom was like the sweet. There's a lot of people yeah, sitting there whose true. moms are in prison. There's a lot of times like, oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. She is. Oh, Jesus. No, no she is in prison. We're no, in comedy. I'm so, 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 so I'm like, all right. Now, all right. my mom is furthest from that. She owned a tennis shop. So my dad working in NASA, my mom owned a tennis shop. She was definitely um, kind of literally the yin-yang. I got my father's creativity side, being an engineer, and where I build all my props. And then I got my mom's personality, where I've got the thing. So it really did blend well. My brother, I don't know. He's, you know he was just... F-16 fight jitter pilot, you know, you know, I'm gluing dildos and walkers together and gluing hats Strategically, together. Strategically, though. Strategically. Strategically, though. There's a way to do it. You can try to build your own, but you had, I know how to do it. You can take that NASA background right, and do take different shit with yeah. it, dude. But learn, yeah. So your dad, what is he? What was he doing for NASA? Is he still with yeah, NASA? No, he's not. Wait, he's now retired. I, re, uh, resi I resigned. Retired. He's he moved on to heaven. But he, uh, he when he worked there, he was... Uh, uh, in logistics and so he he made he first of all what he did i thought was kind of cool he he uh, taught the astronauts how to drive on the moon the lunar module get the fuck out of here how did he learn how to do that i said i uh, did you, did you go up? to the moon right did you go to the moon to learn this i mean right and he said that's a great question son you're smart so uh they guess they just taught no one knew that's what was interesting they had to teach what they would think might happen on the moon and how to drive if if there was just conditions and how they you know practice and rehearse for all that and after the 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 moon landing, then he moved into um, shuttle, and uh, at the shuttle thing, I wait, thought, was he there for the original moon landing, the first? Yeah, he was. Was he? Yeah. yeah, the one that people think didn't then happen. Wasn't, yeah, ask. You wish too bad my dad wasn't here and ask him about that. I'm gonna see someone get riled up. <laughs> Uh, my dad would be fucking, he'd be fucking. He, wait, wait, wait. I, taught, I think I taught uh, people yeah, how to drive yeah, on yeah, the moon. I think, God, yeah, I think, right, exactly, exactly. I think, I, think I was on, there. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Your dad yeah, and, and taught Neil about, Armstrong yeah, how to drive yeah, a vehicle yeah, yeah, yeah. for the moon. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. And as a kid, I never really, you know, thought, I didn't think anything of were kids. I just thought, I don't want to go to another launch. You know what I mean? I want to yeah, yeah. watch the Gilligan's you know, Island. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd go, you know, watch the launch. And I think I was, this is fun. I was think I was 13. My dad, we were going to see a, the shuttle launch. And we're out there at the, the Cape. And there's a tent for beer and soda and chips and stuff. And there's a tent for beer. So my dad says, what do you want? I said, I don't know, just a Coke and a hot dog. And my dad says, well, I'm not waiting in that line. You're having a beer. I said, how old are you? Uh, 13. So yeah. I said, uh, all right, don't tell your mom, but just have a beer. So he gets the beer and he's like, try it. And I'm like, eh, you don't like it? I said, mm, it's okay. He's like, do you want me to get you? I said, no, I'm fine. I'll rough through it. So I drank my first beer and I think I saw three launches. Um, and then we got home. My mom's like, how was the launch? I said, oh my God, I got drunk. Dad got me a beer. And I'm like, Jesus, what? So yeah. I, Were you there for Challenger? Yes, I was. Well, I was there. I was in, I know exactly where I was. I was in my car. I was a courier when I was in 
college when I just first started doing comedy. I drove bank bank reports to banks and back. So that's why I was listening to every day on the radio, this comedy show. And I would listen to and listen to it. So I was in on the car in the, on the highway and it, when it happened and we didn't have cell phones. So I pulled over and got a pay phone and called my dad at work. And I remember my dad picking up. Are you seeing that in the sky though? You're oh, in Florida, right? Oh no, we saw it. Yeah. Well, what happened was they said like, that's going to happen any second. So we all pulled over. Oh, I see. You're and all watching I'm, the law. And then I saw, and I was like, that didn't look good. And then everyone on the news was speculating something. So I said, well, I got the first knowledge, hand knowledge. I'll just call my father right to his office. And it didn't ring out, pick up at first. And then I, I went and drove a little bit further and I got back to school and I called him again. And then he picked up and I said, what, what's, he's, I can't talk, son. I said, what's going on? He says, well, the shuttle blew up. And I, you know, I just never forget what, what the world was going through. But my, you know, know, knowing people that I knew there, like I, I had met the, I had met some of those astronauts, and I met you did, yeah. And I'm uh, my bat father, of course, knew knew them like they were best of friends. I mean, like Gus Grissom days, he used to take Gus Grissom's Corvette and drive these astronauts. They they would do is they have all, they all had Corvettes or uh, usually Corvettes. That was like the car the astronauts drove, and they have them in Houston. And then they got go to Florida. They wouldn't. My dad would drive their cars just for fun. He said, "I'll take like a cannonball Neil run." Armstrong, I'll take yeah. I'll, I'll take yeah, like a cannonball run. Yeah. And my dad would take one of the astronauts car back home. And so we pulled into you know my driveway, and I'm like, "What the? It's Neil Armstrong's Corvette? Don't <laughs> ah, talk, don't really? touch it." Yeah. So it was uh, it was unreal. Yeah, for yeah. that, I had to be also like, "Listen, guys, I teach yeah. him. I teach him how to drive." Not yeah, fly, I mean, right. You know, I, mean, like, I teach him how to drive <laughs> in the moon. I think I can teach him how to drive yeah. a Corvette. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's wild. Yeah, it's crazy, right? You don't think about it as a kid. So and then you tell them, hey, I'm going to get into comedy. They're like, what? I remember I was in our, we had home ec. I don't even think they teach that yeah, in school no, anymore. No. I'm I in there it. learning how to make pizza English muffins and we're watching it. We stopped class, right. you know, everybody's watching. And then also the teachers are freaking out because, uh, was it Krista or Christine McCullough? Chris McCullough. She was McCullough. She was McCullough. a teacher. Right. So they, that was one of theirs. You know yeah, what I no, mean? So right. I remember the teachers running in the room going, are you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not even necessarily worrying about us for a second, but like that was, was that, us. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, still get chills still from home yeah. from that. Yep. Um, so what were your parents always, were they together the whole time? No, they split when, uh, when Kyle Brown was about th probably after the first beer, 13 years old. <laughs> yeah, that was when, my, when he found out, my, my, my dad gave me a beer, they split. So yeah, about 13 years old, they moved uh, <coughs> apart and they divorced and separated. But, you know, they were always cordial and fun to each other. And, and uh, you know, who did you go made, with? Uh, I was with my, well, yeah, I split time with you both. Did. I mom and, and then, uh, my dad didn't live that far down. So I started going to college. Uh, community college at first. Um, I'd stay back and forth with him for that first year, and then uh, and then I just decided I think I want to go to like college, college, and get out of Cocoa. My dad's like, "You're gonna, you know, you're gonna work at NASA," and I'm like, uh, "Oh, he was uh, set on you doing that." Well, yeah, but I said I, I do a thing in the show where about it. I said, "You know, I want I'm gonna, you know, I want you to be." You know, and when I told him I want to be do a com be a comic, he says, "You do know that's probably never going to happen." I tell the crowd, and it's dead silent. I said, it's probably right. It's probably, he was probably right. It's true, but what a dick. Why would you say that? So then I asked my dad, well, what do you want me to be when I get older? And he says, I want you to be an engineer like your father and work at NASA and train astronauts like I did. And I call back to, you, you do know that's probably never going to happen. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the, real, I'm, I'm the dumb son. The F-16 guy's over there. But also the odds, I feel like, of both jobs yeah. might be I, pretty man. parallel to not necessarily coming to fruition. Yeah, yeah, right. I think both are cool jobs too. Like yeah. being an F-16 fighter jet pilot in the Air Force Academy is pretty darn cool. But then my brother thinks being a, com a stand-up comedian, on, you know, especially later on, you know, on TV and whatnot, it's pretty cool too. So it's, we, we both have fun professions and then we look at each other like, you, you, you know what you're doing. I kind of know what I'm doing. He knows what he's doing. But yeah, we can cool. make a mistake. Right. Your dad no, and that's your what I, that's what I, that, you know, I always, you know, I always, really... I always say that. I said, I, I, you know, I have a bad show. There's always another show. You have a bad landing. You don't have another bad landing. You have, yeah. So there's a lot more pressure to be in positions than we are. I think it's, people give us so much praise, but it's like, uh, you know, it's okay. We, <laughs> we can rebound after a bad show. So where do you, where do you fit in? Like, what do you like growing up? At, at, are you a good student? Are you fucking around? Are you getting in trouble? Or are you pretty Definitely straight and not. Narrow? 
fucking around. I was really quiet to myself. Um, not a good student. So I was always just, I probably haven't never been checked, but like ADD or whatever they call. So you were the quiet, bad student. No, not quite the good. Acting quite out. good. Never. I would, if I ever did. You were a good student, you but say didn't do well up, with right, grades. I'm right. Saying. Bad grades. Gotcha. And I, but I wasn't acting up or even like the class clown. I wasn't. I would have a joke ready or a one line. Would you? Or the teacher. But it was always just the one line. I wouldn't stand up and run around the crowd and try to. I just would like, you know, at a quip and everyone would always go. Yeah, it's Scott. That's funny. You know. Do you remember one that still stands out from like middle school where you're like, fuck yeah, I got that was good. Or even the teacher was like, man, that shit's funny. I rem- Well, I remember one by we were talking about going to uh, having a fire. I said, what did you guys do on the weekends or something? I said, I said, well, my friends and I went and had a, uh, a campfire on the beach and uh, the police came and they made us leave. And, uh, I asked the policeman, why couldn't we stay on the beach and have our fire? And he says, cause it's too dangerous. And I said, we're, we're sitting next to two things that put fires out. We have water and sand. It can't be the more safest place to put, put a fire. And she just looked at me. She goes, that's very smart. And I said, well, that's what I said to the cop. He didn't find it that funny. He said, take it in the woods. And I'm not, well, that's good. Take it in the woods. The woods. Where the, you know, take it in the woods where it's, you know. Safe. Yeah. So that's kind of what my brain would think. Like, well, am I missing something? The cleverness of it. So, you know, it's, it's observational. It's also true. You know, it's, you know. It's even like now when I do I do my Trump thing, it's always what makes the Trump thing fun is I'm not making fun of Trump. I'm making fun of just his voice or his thing, his manner. It's like, we didn't, we didn't have bottles. We never had bottles before. But I made bottles, but microphones weren't here. There was no microphones. People just yelled at each other. I made mics. You're like, so it's that. It's kind of like, that's funny to me because you're making the absurdity of, of, of everything about not just, you know, not liking the guy and if the voice if he can get close mine's so bad it's mine's so bad that it's good uh <laughs> you just gotta you just gotta sit down lower though in the seat just, mm. but um i'm sure every comic does a trump but it, it makes it fun just because if it's i think they're laughing at the voice that I'm, I'm i'm making fun of the guy or know. his politics right just yeah fun making of fun his, of it his, right i'm making fun because he'll say that I'm the best and, thing yeah. i've ever they hear i made this you know that's trump with a cold i think i'm a cold today <laughs> So are you getting bullied? Are you a kid that's getting, you're obviously different. Uh, oh, you, you got know, red hair, that's such an interesting, you're a pale kid that's quiet. It's such an interesting word, the bullying, because. I, I'm, okay. Oh, no, I'm saying it's because people, that's the, the word people use. And, and, I, and I used to get picked on, I guess would be called bullying. But I, Today don't, re- I don't remember, I don't remember ever, and, and thank God, I was never picked on like in a violent way where I was, you know, beaten up at the bus stop or, or they would, they would, they would make fun of me verbally because I, I weighed a hundred pounds. I had freckles, red hair, and I live in a beach. So, you know, so like, and your brother's like the blonde, my brother's blonde. You're and the like only one with red six hair? Six two. So I used to say before the, I said, no, you know, my adopted life, my, and they would say, oh, you really are adopted? I said, well, I feel like I am. I'm, you know, they would say, who has the red hair in the family? And I say, we have an Irish setter. <laughs> This, that was the only thing I could come up with, but uh, <laughs> but I don't think I was picked on like bullied as much as I was just I was the, never the physically guy that stood, I, I, No, right. So I was I was I stood out like a, a sort of thing. even like today. I mean, I, I walk through an airport, I definitely look like you know someone different than a normal person. So when young people do it like that with bullying, I, I see it. I have a little four year old uh, goddaughter that that you know that every time I say just yesterday I said, oh my god, that was so funny. She she gets so angry if I say she's funny, and I think what's happening is someone at school. That's how they make fun of someone. It's oh, you're fun, like funny looking, you're funny. I said no, 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 no. If they, you know, if someone says you're funny, they're complimenting you, like you're funny. You made us laugh. She goes no, I don't be, I don't be funny. I don't want to be funny. I'm like okay, I don't think she's quite. So that could be something that happens, you know, banter wise with with kids again. But, but yes, I was definitely picked on. Thank God my brother was a senior. I was a freshman, so everyone knew my brother. He was a swimmer, and he was like I said. It was Garrett. He was, everyone knew him. So I was Garrett's little brother. So all of his friends would always pick me up. I weighed 100 pounds. And, and I got to be part of the cool team because I was Garrett's brother. So then when my brother left, and I was just the only one there, then, you know, I had to fend my, for myself. And that's when I started doing, uh, well, trying to be more funny and try to get into comedy. Not get into stand-up comedy. Just get into being funny with more quips with people and and observational things. And then it started in college with the actual of a coming up with, I think I'm going to be a stand-up comic. 
which is fun looking back, right? Even you, like, it's just a weird thing to, and you, you dive into something that I know nothing about. Like nothing. I said, I've never, I mean, I would watch George Carlin and watch Phyllis Diller and everyone on the Tonight Shows. Didn't and, know anyone and who did I, it. I didn't, didn't know, right. No, no, I know, a right. voice or I didn't even know what a manager and agent was. That's, I thought we were just getting up, making people laugh at yeah, first. You that's, know? Then I'm like, oh shit, now we got to do this. That's absolutely the truth. Um, I was the worst with that with comedy because I would do I would do gigs and I wouldn't even pick up my check because I just I I almost just I was was not so much not doing it for the money I was just couldn't believe I was doing it I would leave and they say you didn't pick up your check and I'm like oh sh all right and people other comics are like that's like the first thing I did before I went on stage I'm like I know I wasn't thinking about my getting paid I was just thinking about the show and thinking about getting to the next gig. And, you know, I had just enough money, you know, to, to get gas and, and, and a beer. I mean, literally nothing. And then I didn't think about that. It was just the idea of doing it and then not doing it. I went for a phase where I couldn't get gigs anymore. So I just quit. Did you? Yeah. And I went and I went to back to Florida and I was shucking oysters at this bar. And there's a jukebox back there and I'm, I'm dancing around like Mick Jagger and Aerosmith and Michael Jackson, which is now at the end of my show. It's a, it's weird. That's where this whole thing at the end of my uh, show came from when I was 17, 18 years old. And uh, I turned it into this whole rock montage thing. But um, Miss Shuck and Oysters and these two, these two couples came in. And I'm doing my, you know, stupid shit, shucking the oysters, and I'm like Mick Jagger, and I'm I'm cutting up napkins and going, you know, <coughs> excuse me, and the flip feathers come out. Every stupid bar gag you can possibly come up with, and they're laughing, and they, and they look at me, and they're like, "You have a twin somewhere," and I said, "God forbid, you know, I have a twin." Jesus, jump now. He says, "No," they're all like, "No, no," like not funny, like a, like you've been to Tampa. I said, "Been to Tampa." Oh, you have a twin. It, what's the guy's, he, he says comedy. He was, we saw him, he's so funny. And you guys say, Carrot Top. And he said, I said, Carrot Top. And I go, Carrot Top? They go, yeah, you should look this guy up. He's fun. He's the funniest guy I've ever seen. He has all these things and gags. Get and I go, out. yeah. And I went, oh, wow, cool. That's cool. Carrot Top, huh? I'll check that out. And I went to my manager that night and I said, I might uh, have to go back in to do my what i used to do before so i'm, I'm not going to leave but i'll give you a two weeks notice and he says where are you doing said, you know comedy and he said you were doing comedy i said yeah i never i quit he says oh we're gonna do it again so i said yeah i think so i called my buddy who booked gigs and i said you don't happen to have a gig anything i haven't done comedy in like two years so i don't know if you have I don't, you know he said i have new year's eve and uh fort myers i'm like well, I'm not, my first show back's not going to be New Year's Eve in a 500 seat comedy club. No way. It's called Dr. Al's Comedy. So I said, um, no, you need like a bar, a little shithole gig I can do. And he said, no, take this one. And fuck you. I said, I'm, Bob, I haven't done comedy. And like, he's like, you're carrot top. For fuck's sake. You got it. And I said, okay. And I put the bit the bullet and I went down there and uh, my mother of all people got wind of it. And she said, I'm going to come watch you with Dolores. And was like, this the first time she had come ever, to see you? Yeah. Even in, I should never seen Dolores you is such an old lady's name. No, that was Dolores. my grandma. Oh, yeah. Friend, Dolores. 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 Yes. So mom and Dolores, Donna and Dolores came. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> such an old couple. It'll be a good TV show, lady. Donna and Dolores, like right after uh, Cagney and Lacey. Oh, so they came into the show. And, and as you know, if you know, but a New Year's Eve shows, me and people, it was just, it was, it was, it was anything but. Um, a crowd listening and picture. They were just throwing whistles yeah. and boo and blinging them, right? Mm -hmm. So it was perfect. I got up there. <gasps> I did my my time I had to do it. And at the end, they were just shooting corks off. And the manager was like, that was great. You killed it. I said, I didn't even do any of my act. He said, no, you've worked the crowd. Let them do. They were shooting corks through my fucking hands. So I... I went back, did, and then that's, you know, the, the ends, then here I am. Did Donna and Dolores love Donna it? Donna and Dolores. Yeah, they loved it. My mom to this day will still remember. You remember that night I was there? I said, yes, of course I remember that. My father so, never got to see me perform until the very end. He did get to that. He did. He did. And then he became a huge fan, but my dad was not into me. This being. is what I wanted to ask you. This is a NASA man. Your brother's going in the Air Force. Mom's got her tennis thing going. Were your parents supportive at first? I wouldn't say they weren't supportive, but they were not into it. Both of them. My mom, well, my mom was just said, you know, if you can do it, you're free to do it. My dad was like, bullshit. You're not going, forget doing comedy. You're not going out of 
Cocoa, Florida, you're going to stay and work at the Space Center. And I kept saying, Dad, you have to be smart to work at the Space Center. I got to break it to you. Now, being a comic, you have to be smart too, but I was just being stupid. I was going to say, you're obviously wise, and it's a different smart. Right. It's It's just a totally different different smart. smart. It is. It's a totally different smart. So I go and I, and, I, and I just start pursuing it and I end up doing it. But, and, you know, just enough to buy beer and, and stuff. I, so I had a gig, one or two gigs outside of, you know, one in North Florida and one like even further. I'd never been on state. I think it was like on the edge of Georgia. And I was so nervous. I'd never f- driven myself out of the state of Florida before in my life. And here I am in my car. There's no cell phones. I don't know how to get to, I, just don't, I have a map, you know, an actual mm-hmm. map. So I go and I start doing these things. And finally I said to my dad, you know, you want to come see one of my shows? And he was like, like, I don't even know exactly. What do you do? We do stand up. Jo- what does that mean? I said, stand up comedy. It's jokes. So he's like, all right. So he comes to one of the shows and it was just one of those moments in your life that you just, you you see your father just like, who the fuck are you? Cause I was always so quiet. I never did anything. And all of a sudden I'm on stage and I'm, I'm doing yeah, this. You've got I'm doing this whole thing, and everything, but yeah. I have an act and an energy and a thing. And my dad's like, this is fucking great. Like he was so proud of me. And then from that point on, he, you know, he called himself Pop Top. You know, he became. <laughs> no, I called him. Yeah, you Pop nicknamed Top. him. Yeah, Pop Top. <laughs> and now my brother Garrett, I call him Garrett Top. But uh, my great. dad started it all with Pop Top. Pop Top. Yeah, Pop Top. That's fucking hilarious. And, uh, but then he became a huge fan. I mean, he couldn't believe he still, before he died, he still, because I, 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 I just don't know how the hell you. You did that and came. I, mean, I don't know. I'm proud of you, but I'm, you know, I, I just kind of did it too. I didn't, I didn't really, I just did it. There's not like an uncle in yeah, Vegas. I never really like, asked I anybody. Right. Yeah. I mean, ever. I just kept doing it. And even when I got on TV, that was like the first time I, you know, I wouldn't tell anybody that I was even doing. I just called one night and my, you know, my dad and my mom and some people that I grew up with. And I said, Hey, I'm on the, I'm on the tonight show tonight. If you're around. And they're like, you're on what show tonight? I'm like the tonight show. And they're like, like I said, like NBC, and that was when it was. I think it really it struck. Real. You know, I'm I'm standing on the little gold star, and it's like you know, da, 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 da. that was you know, for them and me. I mean, that was some. You're like, holy shit! I think I'm I'm in show business. Like now I'm you know went from Shoik and Usher's to, to to doing this. The Honeydew is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. You know, I'm a big believer in therapy. We talk about that mind muscle all the time. All right. It can be great for a lot of stuff. It's helped be the best version of yourself. It's not just for people who've experienced major trauma. All right. So if you're even thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash honeydew today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash honeydew. Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, Liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, all in a single sugar-free stick. You know we keep it here at the studio. Liquid IV has been with us since, I want to say, day one. And they're still here, and that's thanks to you guys. You love Liquid IV. We love Liquid IV. They're so convenient. I'm bringing them out on tour. We got to keep healthy during these winter months, man. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. It's got three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, no artificial sweeteners, eight vitamins and nutrients, plus non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. However you hydrate, grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in ball nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code honeydew at checkout. That is 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code honeydew at liquidiv.com.
Did you know nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they forgot about? Between streaming services, fitness apps, and delivery services, it's never-ending. A free trial starts to add up when you don't remember to cancel it on time. Thanks to Rocket Money, there's no more wasting money on forgotten subscriptions. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, boom, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lowering your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. Rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. Um, Let but me the, ask you a question. As you know, question. it goes so fast, though, right? So then you know, then, then another good two years, three years by, you're doing movies and you're doing TV. And then all of a sudden you're like, I never got a chance to absorb that moment, really. It's like, you know. But that moment. Mm. If that couple doesn't come in and say that to oh, you, no. Who do knows? you think you go back? I don't think. I don't know. I, I mean, that know. had to happen. I think that was unbelievably a kismet. It had to have. I don't know. It, and probably happened for a reason because you're right. I don't it think. It definitely Because I for definitely a was not. That's your I was saying. Give, that's what pushed I you right back. I had given it right? away. I mean, I was done. I didn't even think about it ever again. And then I, when I did think about it and then do it, then I had that, that feeling it back. And then I was like, okay, I think I'm going to try this more. And then, um, and then, yeah, I was just, one day I was doing a club. It was yeah, like it was a club in this barn. And it was it was over, and I was packing up all my stuff, and people were coming up to the stage as I was putting my stuff away. And they said, "Why aren't you?" So I went. A lot of TV shows were on comics, were on TV shows, and this couple says, "Why aren't you? Why, why aren't you on TV?" And because it was a TV thing on afterward, I said, "I don't even, I don't know. I don't know how to get. I don't know how to even get on TV." And then this guy's like, "Well, you should you should be on there." So I I had this guy that wanted to be my manager. And I said, he said, what a manager? And I said, well, what would a manager do? And he said, well, I'll help you do this, I'll do that. I said, will you, will you get me on TV? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, if you can get me on TV, we'll do it. So it wasn't that long later. It might have been two, week, three weeks. He said, I think I got you on a comic strip live, which was uh, huge. It was, you know, it was Fox and... I it was filmed right in LA at the uh, Jamie's Club there, and uh, I go and I'd never been in California. There's TVs, lights, just like this. It's an actual. I'm mean, I'm scared to death, and I remember just thinking to myself, I'm scared to death. Like I'm going up and it's TV people and crying. You know, I, I'm, everyone on, on too quiet. You know, and I just for some reason I just took a deep breath and said, you know what? Just do it like you're doing, like you're at, you're at the club in Charlotte. It's nothing different except there's a camera guy there. So I went up and I just was like, yeah, I forgot there was cameras. And I just did my first joke was a crime watch, neighborhood crime watch sign that I stole. I said, this is a, how good our crime watch is. And I'm watching their fucking signs. And it killed. I mean, that first big laugh. And then I thought, oh, my God, fuck, this is killing it. And then I went in to do the rest of my whatever the hell did I you had. do wendy on that one uh i the think bitch i closed is here i think i closed on that yeah i said that shit she's here yeah that i did yeah that was my that was my <laughs> as i say in my show but that now i say that was i always say that was my free bird <laughs> people would yell out, do wendy's i'm like fuck all right uh, I put the clips. you know and funny how that bit happened too so i and, and it's just because you know like because because you know, people always wonder like how a rolling stones how they came up with whatever right or I am always curious, like, how the fuck did this song, how did it, you know, I'm friends with Queen. I said, how did you write, like, you know, under pressure? Well, like, I want to know that. So the Wendy's bit was my classic, literally. I, I, I was at a Bahamas club, and I worked there for a, week, a whole week. And every, me and the opening act would go down to the, to the lunch, and the only thing that was open was a Wendy's. And 
Uh, so we went to the same Wendy's every day. And every time we walked in there, they, the girls that worked in the Wendy's were always laughing at me. So I'm figured, okay, I'm goofy looking. Da, 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 da. And finally one day, they're all laughing again. I said, I said, are you laughing? Uh, Americans are making you laugh. Are you, we, we come in here every day and, and the girl's like, no, you, you. And she's like, you look, she's like, like, you look like this. And I said, oh, I look like her. And they go, yeah. And my friend's like, dude. I said, oh, I look like the Winnie's girl. So I, I took my hair and I put them like this and they went, they all started laughing. So he said, that's how that came about. So that night I went down well, that day, we went to the drugstore. I, I bought these little clips and I just went on stage and I put my hair in pigtails like that. And I walked on and I said, um, yeah, you think you look bad. Look at this shit. And fucking Wendy's. I'm the Wendy's girl. And then it turned into a whole bit where you pull up and like, shit, she's here. Mm. And you clean up and, you know, they're looking at you like, yeah. So it turned into a whole like 20 minute routine. But yeah, that's how it happens. Just, you know, someone's laughing at me thinking, look, the Wendy's girl. I said, ah, fuck, let's put that in the act. Well, the thing I've always loved about you too is you have no problem shitting on yourself. You well, have no problem making fun of yourself or taking shot yourself. Where does that start? Well, I think that starts out when I'm like, literally when I was being picked on as a kid. That was my that was my 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 way back. You'd beat them to the punch before, before they, they could. could yes, the M and M, the whole fucking. Literally yeah. before they could make fun of me, I've, I've already done it. Like mm. there, and a, better than they probably would have anyway. Right. Yeah. Always. I mean, I would always boom, and they'd be like, "Oh, I was just going to make fun of the fact that you're skinny and, and you have yeah freckles up yeah." It, Exactly why. So it was always self-deprecating. And then, and, and even comics that I admired and watched, I always loved that. I liked, I liked the, it's like two things. I, I like observational humor because I think people relate to it, right? When you say something, it's like, uh, like they, people, you, they literally have done this or seen it before they get it. Um, I don't do a lot of politics. I do the observational and do like everyday kind of storytelling. Some of the things that just happen to me that people now that i've gotten older people love to hear almost like what we're doing now they want to hear like well how did how did how did you get into how did you become karen like how did that happen so yeah it's it's self-deprecating observational and you to be a comic you can't not we're not self the hero we're though. not the heroes right you were, and you know as long as you know that so if there are people that that like that don't do that it doesn't work in comedy if you go up there and you're just like the hot guy and the thing it's not going to, I mean, you know, I, one of my favorite people in the world, God bless him, would make me laugh just, he could read a phone book and uh, was Louis Anderson. Yeah. So Louis, you talk about self-deprecating, you know, big Louis, yeah. he'd come out and first thing he'd say, I was at the beach today. And that's a, that's a laugh alone because he's at the beach and everyone trying to push me back in the water. And two drugs and right away he's picking on himself and they're trying to push him in the water. How do you not love this guy? I mean, you just automatically love him. If he didn't come out and address anything, I think people would be like, does he not know he's fat? And, and you just love him. And it's like, you know, you can't, you got to come out and be the underdog. You know, you're not the, you're not the, you know, even a success you get, you're still carrot top. You know, I do so many things in my act that um I pick, that I, that I go back to say, like I said, you know, I get, I get a lot of love. And I get a lot of shit. I said, but the shit, that's why I'm a comic. I mean, that's why I started doing comedy. I have to have thick skin. But there's there's things that make me laugh, things that people come up with about me that are the furthest that it just makes me laugh. Like the carrot top had a facelift. I said, would I not look better if I had a fucking facelift? And everybody <laughs>, laughs. I go, no, seriously. Like I had a face. This is what I, if I had one, I would look good. Why would I, would they write? So then I do a picture of me. And this is me three years ago. And it's a picture of me on the big screen. And this is me now. And it's a picture of, you know, K Caitlyn Jenner. I said, I'm the same. <laughs> I'm the same guy. I'm the same fucking guy. And it gets the biggest. And then I say, right. So I'm picking on myself for looking like, you know, I'm saying that I look like a drag queen. And this is me now. I'm the same fucking guy. And then they laugh even harder. They're like, oh, well, that's great. He's got makeup on. He said, yeah. So it's. It's always self. The whole show is self-deprecating. I mean, all the, all the way through. It's even when I'm doing it, that my Trump, I'm, I'm I'm making fun of me, not him. Like, is my because it's so bad. I have so many questions. All right, so you come from actually, it sounds like good parents. So you're yeah, not having to parents. develop thick skin back then. You sort of uh, developed yeah. that defense mechanism out right. in the real world and schools, things like that. When do you or have you fully? Because I know some of us haven't. 
when do you finally accept this is who I am and I'm going to fucking be this person and run with it? When do you finally accept the rainbow hat you made? Probably and- in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite ready. I feel you on it. But no, yeah. I, I, well, you know what? When did you get comfortable in your skin? Probably when I turned 50. For real? Yep. And you're how old now? 58. 58. And my crew would probably agree. I don't know what it was. It was, uh, I've been doing it all the time, all the time, doing it, doing it. And then I don't know, I hit 50 and I, I got into this rhythm with not only myself, I got into a rhythm with um, the show and, and writing and and trying th- and and everything from doing sound checks before the show and rehearsing things new every night and um and just kind of being me like i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna color my hair like fucking rainbow and i'm gonna wear whatever you know i dress homeless so no one asks for money that's why i dress like this uh, if you look broke they won't ask you for money <laughs> So, but or I, anything, I, I went, anything, not or anything, not even directions, nothing, nothing. Dude, nothing. <laughs> or nothing. So if you don't want to get fucked with, dress like a bum, dress like a bum. I'm telling you, it you works. should start your own clothing line. It's, it, literally, it's kind of like it's kind. Yeah, yeah, I should. It's kind of like that. Larry, Larry David has said when he wears the Trump hat. It's a fucking brilliant. If you hadn't seen it, you probably have. It gets him out of all when he wears. It's just the same Everything, thing. Yeah. It, yeah, so it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant piece of comedy. But um. But yeah, there is, there was, well, yeah, 50. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sh- quite sure why the actual age 50 was, but I just think, you know, middle right at my turning point or I'm not going to live to be a hundred, but I was 50. I, I've had success. I, 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 I just one day was like, I want to have fun. I want to be fun. And I, and I just started having more, I started telling stories too on stage. Like I tell a lot of stories. Like people think the show and they see it and they go, wow, I like the whole storytelling. Are they expecting you just to do one They think it's just props. The other, they just think right. it's props. And the live show has evolved into this kind of a, really, a uh, retrospective outline of how I, how I who and how I got here. And so now that I have a fan base that's followed me, they they they're, they're, they listen to every, it's dead silent. And they're listening at the end. They, they just love it. So I, I did the whole thing about, you know, comics that inspired me, you know, from Carlin to thing. And, and I told a story and then I show a clip of George Carlin mentioning me on a, on a thing. I said, this is, this is the moment where you just, cause he said that was at the airport and they said, did you pack your own bags? And he goes, no, Carrot Top packed my fucking bags. Now I'm like, and the whole crowd goes nuts. And I'm like, you know, this, and I'm like that kind of shit. You know, I never just sat back and, and enjoyed it and, and shared it with the crowd. And people send me shit with people making it. But I said, I should show that and say, that's, you know, studying him in my dorm when I was 12, 13 years old in Catholic school. And then, you know, he mentions me in a bit. I'm like, that's cool shit. That's yeah. cool. It's cool. But that's about the age, right around 50. I just said, fuck, I'm going to start having fun and dance around stage more and I kind of have my own stage you like look and people like my crew that day said I like your whole everything is, is working right now I like I like the whole it's rock and roll mixed in with uh it's fun and I, I write more than I ever did I don't know why is that right yeah I just I mean I, and and, and, and writing in a sense too of did. not even not even if it works it's just writing and my problem is I don't own a computer so I, I still write everything in notepads do you yeah so and i one of these guys that i don't sit down and write i have many many friends that say i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, what are you doing he said i'm gonna i'm gonna sit, i'm gonna write this morning or this afternoon or this weekend and i'm like wow i've never done that never i just write all day long and then i'll I try to jot it down or if i'm even in a conversation with someone i'm like Fuck, like last night I was having a conversation at the, at the hotel. I was like, oh, and this late guy was like, that was so funny. I'm thinking, that was. I got to remember how to put that in my somehow. But that's how it usually would happen. I'll, or I'll ad lib it on stage and then try to redo it. Mm-hmm. But I'm definitely not a guy to sit down and say, I'm going to write a, a Trump joke or Dallas Cowboys. It just doesn't happen. It just all of a sudden hits me. Five minutes before the show, I'm like, ah, that's that's it. I just made one John Kerry. Now, this is a great joke. John Kerry just stepped down. Um, resigned. resigned. I didn't even know he was up. Right, I didn't either. <laughs> I and, and, and what's funny is I even say that in the show. I said, I said, I do a Trump. Said, Where, where's Johnny? Where's John? And it's John. John Kerry's not. Why no one told me he was gone? 
And then I go, uh, no, he did. He resigned. I have a big picture. I'm John. Do you remember John Kerry? And they, they kind of clap. I said, he resigned. His wife owns Heinz Ketchup. Did you That's know that? Right. And then the crowd's like, and I said, no, I'm not making this shit up. I'm, I'm a, now, as a comic, this is how you write a That's joke. Wild. His wife owns Heinz Ketchup. Can you imagine his wife trying to get him off at night? And it just fucking kills. Makes me hate the Steelers more. You, too. It, it just kills. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> And then you do that, and they go crazy, and then you add a song, and like a white wedding, you just you just make it deeper and deeper, and then they're done with that. You said you don't do, you just tap, you just tap. So there's like five jokes in one, but that's a, a new, like a, one example of a new one that I'm just I was just watching the news, and I just John Kerry's wife owns Heinz ketchup. There's got to be a joke there. Do you talk about your dad and your uh, material yeah. at all? And- yeah, I talk about how he how he wanted me to, but I, when he took me to see Gallagher. And you I took you to see Gallagher? Yeah. Oh, and, I wanted, and I wanted to be a comedian. And I told him oh. I wanted to be a comedian. It's a really great story in the show where I tell him, I, he takes me to it. And there was a, a line, you could meet him. So I said to my dad, oh, man. And my dad's like, what? You want to go meet him? I said, because I'm, I'm you know, dying to be a comedian. Somebody said, all right, go, to, go meet Gallagher. I'm going to go to the car and get a beer. I said, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, he's getting the beer line. And, and go <laughs> he's got him in the gonna, car. I called back to him to go get a beer. So he didn't know my dad. He probably had two. So... Goes back to the beer line, yeah. And then I do the whole that mean Gallagher, Gallagher, duh, and then I said I want to be you. And then my dad says, you know, you know, it's never going to happen. Then he wants me to be a pie. I said, you do know this probably never happen. And then it, it, it's a really nice moment. And then I do the Gallagher uh, montage of meeting him and telling him a joke. I he said, yeah, you, you want to be a comedian, you have to have jokes. And I said, you do. And he said, yeah. And I said, oh, well, that makes it harder. And he says, you don't have any jokes. I said, I have one. You got a logo, bro. I said, why do you should I should say I said I have a look, but I haven't talked I haven't talked about it in the show, but I said I have one. And I did do this in front of him. Uh, and how old are you at this time? Fourteen. Oh hell yeah. So he said, What joke do you have? And it was in my pocket. Again, it was already a prop. So I, I pulled out a, a little I do it in the show, I said I saw him stand there and he said, You have to have you have to have one joke. And I said, Well, I have one. And I take it out, and it's a little thing of Visine. So I said, you know, they say Visine gets the red out, and then I pour it in my hair, and everybody laughs. And I said, and Gallagher's like, that's funny. And I said, then I go like that. He's like, fuck, you got two. But that punchline, oh, you got two, is like just the kicker. You know, I said, oh, fuck. I, he goes, oh, fuck, you got one. I said, then I go like that. He's like, oh, fuck, you got two. And then I show a picture of him and I at 14. So it validates the story. Mm-hmm. And the thing in the picture is priceless. I have like, you know, this little red hair. I'm 14 years old holding on to Gallagher. So it's a, it's a good story. And that, that's the kind of stuff I just started, as you asked me, or that kind of going into that. I started but around that time, just started like incorporating things that people maybe, maybe want to know or hear about as opposed to just um, the old care top, you know. You have to kind of rebrand yourself. And people love something they don't expect they, they and people expect that's what they're going to experience oh when you hit the thing and all the crap i said yeah no, i don't hit watermelons that's gallagher i hit cantaloupe you hold the trample thing. you do the trampoline yeah no, no not it's not me really. jesus <laughs> you get shit like that though sometimes yeah. older people yeah well i did it with gallagher i had a great it's a i have to have this is the best clip ever I mean, literally ever. He came to my show like four nights in a row at, at the Luxor, and he sat on the side of the stage and just kind of stood there. And he did, he did never laugh once. He just kind of stood there and watched, which is probably normal for a comic too. I don't know if I, I mean, I would probably laugh. I'm a, the first, I'm time. a little more of a laugher than me too. Obviously. But he, but he, he just just studying me, and you know, he knows that I he's my mentor, and I, I you know, I really honestly, when I first started, I go to to ask questions and jokes, and so he comes up. I go, I go home the third night. I, I go back and my manager calls me and he says, uh, your buddy's here again. So I said, Gellar? Yeah, he's here again? Yeah. I, Fuck. So we're driving in. I'm like, I have to think of an idea, right? So I'm like, oh, I have an idea. So I go to my warehouse. I said, don't we have a, like a hammer, a big hammer of some sort? And I don't know, my, I'm calling my guy. Is there like a hammer in here somewhere? He's like, I think there's like an old mallet thing that we used to. So anyway, we find this big hammer thing. It looks like it could be a Gallagher joke. And I get it. You have a stool down there, right? Says, yeah. I said, all right, let's go to the store and get a, 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 a watermelon. So we go to Target. We get a watermelon. Thank God they had watermelons. I mean, 
that was just, you know, that, well, you have any watermelon? I think we have, it's not really season for what we have one or anyway, bringing this watermelon, the hammer stool. So I get down there and I said, he doesn't know about this. So I said, Gallagher, I said, at the end, if you're cool with this, I have an idea and the crowd will go ape shit. I'm going to reference the woman in the front row just randomly. I'll say to the woman, I hit the watermelon at the end. So just in case you, you know, I could just to, to, to set it up. She's looking at me like, when are you going to hit the watermelon? I do it at the end. The wrong show. I don't hit the, you know, I make a joke. I hit cantaloupe, but I do it at the end. So I've set it up. And now he's over on the side of the wings and I'm on this side. So I go off and I, they have, you know, another, please hand another hand for carrot top. So I, I run out with, with the stool and the watermelon and I put it down on the stool and I go back with the hammer we had placed and I go to grab the hammer to hit it. And I, now I didn't, I told him to, I'm going to do something at the end. I want you to come out and like you take it and smash it or whatever. I don't see him over there. So I'm like, I guess he's not going to, he kept saying, I don't, I don't know what the bit is. I said, the bit is you come out and the crowd goes ape shit. It's Gallagher. They're going to go crazy. And I just talked about being Gallagher, but you're actually going to come out and you're going to hit the watermelon. It's sucking. Yeah, I got it. I'm so I'm like there, boom, I'm ready to go. I don't see him. Like, I guess I'm fun to do this myself. So I go, I look one more time over. He comes running out, grabs the watermelon, pushes me. It's all on video. He pushes me, I mean, hard, like three times, yeah, violently across the stage. I mean, violently enough where he, he's just being, fun, I think being funny. And then he takes the watermelon and he's like, runs off this side with it, right? And I come back out another hand for Gallagher, my guy, and the crowd's going crazy. And I come backstage and he's like, what the, f why, what do we, why did we do that? What does that mean? I said, listen to the crowd right now. He goes, but what's the purpose of it? I said, to have fun. That, they, did you not hear the crowd? How much love they fucking, they're losing their mind. They just saw you. And it was funny. He goes, what was funny about it? I said, because I was going to hit a watermelon and I'm just going to steal your act. And you come out and you take your act back. It's funny. In fact, what you did was funny than what I was going to, I was actually going to try to hit it. And he just never, he says, oh, well, don't ever show that to anybody. It's horrible. So I said, okay. And then, but Gallagher, and then two's I, out there. And then he just, well, you know, <laughs> no, not, any, not anymore. Well, Gallagher, not, any, two. not anymore. I used to have a joke, uh, Gallagher, two, audience, nothing. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, but no more Gallagher, two. But then Gallagher, uh, you know, died. And um, then, so I, he was, then I started I, showing I, that clip to people. It's look, so obviously, I've never seen the clip because the whole time I'm thinking, man, right. hell yeah. It's funny. He didn't have to do shit. Didn't have to sell a ticket. No, just come and do his fucking. Yeah. And the crowd was losing their mind. They were just thought it was the best thing. That's ever. what I thought you said was he's going to come grab it and he's going to do it. And then he act just, like, don't you fucking what, this. What, I'm, you know. Yeah, no. He you just, set he, it up at the top. But I know it, you he, think but, this but, is but what he, But I, what he did was was brilliant. It was actually funnier than him doing it probably because I, I really didn't want him to hit the watermelon because people would have they would have lost their minds. But it worked out. It worked out good that he just grabbed it. But, you know. Um, can I talk to you about your dad passing? Are you comfortable yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. that? Is it something you knew was coming? Was yeah. it unexpected? Yeah, he was pretty uh, unhealthy uh, for most of his life. He smoked, you know, uh, on a Vespa. You know, my dad would smoke all the time. He'd ride a Vespa? He, he, I had a scooter one time. He went for a ride and I said, are you smoking on the... You know, oh, that's how he would get... Ski, and he had a he came back on a jet ski with a cigarette. And I said, that's amazing. My dad was like, what? I said, you went on a jet ski with a cigarette. It's out there. <laughs> so, yeah. Not a joke. So um, he wasn't in good health. And then finally, he just, uh, you know, he just got down to the, towards the end there. And, uh, but yeah, and that's when I started a lot of, too, a lot of the storytelling. I think he he would really appreciate it now because uh, it's so, uh, it's warm and it's fun. And it's kind of showing a, a battle between, like, every, anyone in the audience probably had that, not necessarily a battle, it just had a, had a struggle or a thing with their parents, especially about what they want to do, especially something dumb as being a stand-up comic or a rock star, you know, making I mean, a rock star. So, you know, and my dad also being the extreme NASA guy that was no nonsense guy to a guy, you know, someone like me who's, uh, you know, really honestly was like my dad, except when I got on stage, I'm not. But uh, yeah, it, it, at least he got to see it and like i said pop top was was Hell he yeah. loved it yeah he, he, how old was he when he passed away he was young 76 but Shit. Yeah, he smoked like yeah like, he had just bad health and just didn't take care of himself and, 
And your mom and dad were still mom cordial is still with each other, though? Yeah. yeah. My yeah. mom is 83, and she's she? still, I mean, she's still. Oh, your mom went after a younger She's still man. rocking it. She's still rocking it. Really young. Good health. All her wits about her. You know? Does she? Yep. Does, and how? when's the last time she saw you perform? I just, uh, not just two weeks ago. Does know? she live in Vegas? Live in Vegas. Oh, yeah. she does. She's okay. a stripper. Good. She's a stripper. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> There's definitely a market for an 83 year old stripper. There is days. a market. <laughs> something for everybody out there. <laughs> I mean, she's a good stripper, too. Donna and Dolores. Donna and there. Dolores. Coming up next, Donna and Dolores. <laughs> double D's. Yeah, right? The double D's. They come out. Fuck, there it is. It's a, that's a show. It's a midnight show. <laughs> it's a midnight show. <laughs> oh, dude. This was great, man. Thank you for yeah, real. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming yeah, on here and doing this. Thanks for this. having me on. This was fun. It's been great to uh, get to hear your real story. Yeah. Um, so first time guest here, I ask everybody... Um, after everything we've talked about, advice they would give, sorry, they would give to their 16-year-old self, what would you say to 16-year-old oh, wow. Carrot Top that's or great, Scott Thompson yeah, at that point? Yeah, that's a point, great I question. Because I think I did most of everything right. Like, I did most of everything right. I don't, don't go looking back and thinking, yeah. there's one, I mean, there's one thing I probably, and but again, it might not have helped. But if I could go back when I was, when I was starting out or thinking about it, problems, I started wanting to really honestly get into comedy older in college but when i was in high school i probably should have taken some theater classes i think not not that I, like i said i i think i'm fine without it because my acting is amazing but um i you know taking some theater classes and kind of being but i don't know maybe not doing that maybe that fact that i was a wrestler and i swam and i wasn't in i wasn't in uh theater maybe just that works you know i um i probably uh, and again this is the only thing i think when I when I got into comedy, I, I lived in Charlotte, um, North Carolina, and that's where the, the the hub of this guy owned like hundreds of comedy clubs. And so at the time, you know, I said he said manage you, and I said, well, you know, you know what what can you get me? I'll get you on TV, and also I'll book you every night for the next. I mean, you literally will work every night for the next five years or ten years guaranteed we'll just go to my office and you're booked in nashville nashville raleigh for the next five years so i was like hmm i mean none of my friends could get gigs i'm getting five guaranteed years of gigs so i said is it really that many oh yeah no i said wow. okay and then i but then i got into the college thing and so i now i couldn't even play these things because i was doing colleges so i i would do colleges after colleges and then i'd do um the weekends I would try to do the clubs, but then go back and do colleges. And I, I didn't stop working for, I think five years, I never took a day off. I was just, I was a workaholic and, and colleges and theaters and then slipping into Regis and Kathy Lee in a Tonight Show and um, do a movie. But the only thing that I th think sometimes that even though I did all that work with the grassroots way around it, if I had gone to LA and I'd stayed here, and kind of did my thing. Who knows what, a, you know, I said, no, I'm not going to do the LA thing. I've got my own thing. I got, who needs LA? I have Charlotte. Like, who says that? And a lot of my friends are like, you don't live in LA? You live in Charlotte? How does that work? I said, well, I just do all the same shit. I just fly to LA and do my, go, do my TV stuff and go back to Charlotte. And do my shows on the road and go back to Charlotte. And he said, but if you stayed in LA, all the people, the, the thing, and people and opportunity, the people that you'd meet, just imagine. And I'm like, that maybe, but maybe not. Maybe by living out here and, and struggling and trying to do it like everybody else might have been something that probably would have discouraged me because uh, I had so much success. It's almost like the only thing about being a big, you know, shark in a little t pond or a, mm -hmm. that's what I was. I was a, I, I was in a little pond. I was the big shark in this little town. I was famous. I mean, I'm, you can't not, not book me. I'm booked, I'm booked uh, or I can go to LA and be a little small fish and not, get it maybe not even figure out a way to get it done so in a sense i think what i did was right but that one part of me thinks if i'd stayed here and pursued it and hung around hollywood maybe that people would have been, but i don't think that was no, my doing i think my it, doing right. was doing it i didn't want to go with the improv Listen, that's great advice and i didn't though. want to go to the improv and sit there wait f till midnight to do my little stupid right. prop trial. So i want to go do an hour and a half at notre dame and so i would do that you know my friends at the improv doing five minute spot and I'm doing an hour and a half at Notre Dame. I'm like, and you're getting paid and you're getting paid, but it's also, I feel like I'm already, I'm like, I'm, I'm being, 
I'm working in the big room. I don't want to go to the back to, you know, I don't know. But so, yeah. And the only other advice that I give, well, I say advice that I give young, <coughs> especially comics, because I get a lot of people naturally that walk up to me and say, I want to be a comedian. Do you have any advice? And I always say, and you said it earlier. Yes. You, there's two things of advice. You have to find a voice on what you're going to do. Because the voice, the voice is the most important, not, not, to, not like the voice, but like what you're going to talk about when they say your name, Ryan, the, what, it, what is going to be your shtick? What's going to be your delivery? What's going to be your energy? What's going to be your style? What's going to, we're going to talk about politics. You're going to talk about current events. And that's not something you just, you have to figure that out. So it takes time. So I say two things, figure out where you can get a lot of time on stage, a lot of time. And the more time you get on stage, you'll finally figure out your voice. So those two things are the most important, the time. And then, then you find out what your, your shtick with me. I'm shit. I've been doing this almost for 40 years next year and I'm still, my voice is changing. I my shit's that. changing I'm, now. I'm good. I hear it. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Thank you. Yeah. Um, please plug anything yeah. you would like yeah, to get. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, really appreciate that. You're fun. You're fun. You're great. Dude. Yeah. Just, we, uh, yeah, we do some road shows coming up in, uh, in De uh, December and, uh, March, and not many because we did the, the Luxor was, we're there every night. So we have a, um, the Luxor, we have a uh, six nights a week, um, for the next six years. And then Whew. who knows, you know, that's, what's fun about the show, but uh, who knows, like, we, uh, you know, something could happen in an hour from now that I may be doing something different, uh, or in some, I'm in a couple of movies that are out now. There's one with Matt Reif called don't suck. It's kind of the title's funny. Cause I'm sure they've already said it sucks. It's called, don't, it's called Don't Suck. And I thought, you know, if I was a writer, I'd say it's too late. You know, they set you up, right? Mm -hmm. Don't suck. Well, that's too late. Well, thank you, man. Yeah. Um, as always, Ryan Sickler on all your social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm -hmm.